Hi guys, Miss Hannah here, and I've got some cool stories for you tonight. Are you ready to read with me? I hope you're all ready and snuggled up somewhere comfortable so we can read our books. So tonight, my first book is called Blackout by John Rocco. Are you ready? It starts out a little sad person. And it says... It started out as a normal summer night. The city was loud and hot. Can you see all right? There we go. And then this page. The city was loud and hot. And then he said, tap, tap, tap. You see, everybody's doing something different. And we take down a game. Inside, everyone was busy. We have a person on the phone. She yells, get out! Aw. And here we have all of the pictures. And it says, much, sorry, too busy. goes upstairs and starts to play the video game. It says, and then... The lights went out. The lights went out. All of them. Mom! Mom comes in. Mom finds her sitting there with her game. She's sitting there. And then it says, nothing worked at all. The city was dark and quiet and still. So we'll start over here with this page. And kind of lean it a little bit so we don't have that glare. And then this page. The city was dark and quiet and still. We huddled around flashlights and candles. See what they're doing? They're making shadow puppets. Uh oh, the kitty's afraid of the dog one. Meow! Until it was too hot and sticky to sit inside. Can we go? So we went up and up and up to the rooftop and found the lights. They found the lights. What are their lights? It looks like stars to me. And people. It was a block party in the sky. We waved to everyone. We waved to everyone, then heard other sounds below. So we went down and down and down to the street. Come on! A party was going on there too! Free! Free ice cream. Yippee! 
Skippy. La 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 la. Singing in the porch. And no one was busy at all. When the lights came back on, everything went back to normal. Click. What is she doing? Turning off the lights. But not everyone likes normal. I gotta go. Good idea, buddy. The end. You know, my nickname used to be Buddy with my dad. So, our next thing that we're going to read. Maya was grumpy. And this one is written and illustrated by Courtney Pippin Mather. Are you ready? Maya was grumpy. Maya was grumpy. She didn't know why she was grumpy. She was just in a crispy, cranky, grumpy, grouchy mood. She didn't want to read or color or eat banana chips. Or wear her favorite shorts or go outside and play. The only thing Maya wanted to do was grouch around the house and share her bad mood. She grumped into Grandma's room and snarled at the cat. He just stretched and went back to sleep. She glumped into the living room and made faces at some birds. They just flew away. She clumped into the kitchen and grumbled at her brothers. Oops, sorry, there's her brothers. They just glopped their food around. Finally, Maya thumped up behind Grandma and growled as loudly as she could. That was probably funny. Okay, feeling a bit grumpy today? Grandma asked. Maya just scowled. Well then, said Grandma, I guess that means no hunting for hippos after breakfast. I never hunt for hippos, Maya grouched. And no putting your head in a crocodile's mouth before lunch. That's just silly, Maya grumbled. Bathing baby elephants would probably be a bad idea today if you're grumpy, Grandma said. Maya rolled her eyes. <clears throat> Certainly no tickling tarantulas until they giggle, Grandma added. Maya shook her head. A tingle in her belly tickled all the way up to her mouth, but she squeezed her lips into a tight line. I did have plans to slide down the neck of a giraffe later, Grandma explained, but I guess we can reschedule. Maya felt a wiggle in the corners of her frown. And definitely, no swinging with monkeys today if you're grumpy. The bubbly giggle escaped through Maya's lips. Swinging with monkeys might be nice, she said. And 
she gave Grandma a big hug. Grandma packed a snack and fixed Maya's hair. Then they all went outside to find the hippos, the crocodiles, elephants, tarantulas, giraffes, and monkeys. And Maya felt much better. The end of Maya was grumpy. So now my next book, Bad Case of Stripes. And this one is written and illustrated by David Shannon. So let's give it a go. All right. So here's our Okay. It says, Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. All of her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror. Then... She screamed. <gasps> Her mother ran into the room, and she screamed too. Oh, my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. This was certainly true. Camilla was striped from head to toe. She looked like a rainbow. Mrs. Cream felt Camilla's forehead. Do you feel all right, she asked. I feel fine, Camilla answered, but just look at me. You get back in bed this instant, her mother ordered. You're not going to school today. Camilla was relieved. She didn't want to miss the first day of school, but she was afraid what the other kids would say, and she had no idea what to wear with those crazy stripes. That afternoon, Dr. Bumble came to examine Camilla. Most extraordinary, he exclaimed. I've never seen anything like it. Are you having any coughing, sneezing, runny nose, aches, pains, chills, hot flashes, dizziness, drowsiness, shortness of breath, or uncontrollable twitching? No, Camilla told him. I feel fine. Well then, Dr. Bumble said, turning to Mrs. Cream, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't go to school tomorrow. Here's some ointment that should help clear up those stripes in a few days. If it doesn't, you know where to reach me. And off he went. Now, the next day was a disaster. Everyone at school laughed at Camilla. They called her Camilla Crayon and Night of the Living Lollipop. She tried her best to act if everything were normal, but when the class said the Pledge of Allegiance, her stripes turned red, white, and blue, and she broke out in stars. The other kids thought that this was great. One yelled out, Let's see some purple polka dots! Sure enough, Camilla turned all purple polka dotty. Someone else shouted, checkerboard! And a pattern of squares covered her skin, and soon everyone was calling out different shapes and colors, and poor Camilla was changing faster, and you can change channels on a TV. That night, Mr. Harms, the school principal, called. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cream, he said. I'm going to have to ask you to keep Camilla home from school. She's just too much of a distraction, and I've been getting calls from the other parents. They're afraid those stripes might be contagious. Camilla was so embarrassed, she couldn't believe that two days ago everyone liked her, and now nobody wanted to be in the same room with her. Her father tried to make her feel better. Is there anything I can get you, sweetheart? He asked. No, thank you sighed Camilla. What she really wanted was a nice plate of lima beans, but she had been laughed at enough for one day. Hmm. Hmm. Well, yes, I see. Dr. Bumble mumbled, mumbled when Mr. Cream phoned the next day. I think I'd better bring in the specialist. We'll be right over. About an hour later, Dr. Bumble arrived with four people in long white coats. He introduced them to the creams. This is Dr. Grop, Dr. Sponge, Dr. Cricket, and Dr. Young. Then the specialists went to work on Camilla. They squeezed and jabbed, tapped and tested. It was very uncomfortable. Well, it's not the mumps, concluded Dr. Grop. Or the measles, said Dr. Sponge. Definitely not chicken pox, put in Dr. Cricket. Or sunburn, said Dr. Young. Try these, said the specialists. They handed her a bottle filled with different colored pills. Take one of these. Each 
Take one of each before bed, said Dr. Grop. Then they filed out the front door, followed by Dr. Bumble. Oh, dear. That night, Camilla took her medicine. It was awful. When she woke up the next morning, she did feel different, but when she got dressed, her clothes didn't fit right. She looked in the mirror, and there, staring back at her, was a giant multicolored pill with her face on it. Dr. Brum Bumble rushed over as soon as Mrs. Queen called, but this time, instead of specialists, he brought the experts. Dr. Gordon and Dr. Mellon were the finest scientific minds in the land, and once again, Camilla was poked and prodded and looked at and listened to. The experts wrote down lots of numbers. Then they huddled together and whispered. Dr. Gord finally spoke. It might be a virus, he announced with authority. Suddenly, funny little virus balls appeared all over Camilla. Or possibly some form of bacteria, said Mr. Mellon. Out popped squiggly little bacteria tails. Or it could be a fungus, added Dr. Gord. Instantly, Camilla was covered with different colored fungus blotches. The experts looked at Camilla, then at each other. We need to go over these numbers again back at the lab, Dr. Gord explained. We'll call you when we know something. But the experts didn't have a clue, much less a cure. By now, there we go. By now, the TV news had found out about Camilla. Reporters from every channel were outside her house telling the story of the bizarre case of the incredible changing kid. Soon a huge crowd was camped down on the front lawn. Oh, look at her poor thing. The creams were swamped with all kinds of remedies from psychologists, allergists, herbalists, nutritionists, psychics, an old medicine man, a guru, and even a veterinarian. Each so-called cure only added to poor Camilla's strange appearance until it was hard to even recognize her. She sprouted roots, berries, and crystals and feathers, and a long furry tail. But nothing worked. Okay. One day, a woman who called herself an environmental therapist claimed she could cure Camilla. Close your eyes, she said. Breathe deeply and become one with your room. I wish you hadn't said that, Camilla groaned. And slowly she started to melt into the walls of her room. Her bed became her mouth, her nose was a dresser, and two paintings were her eyes. The therapist screamed and ran from the house. What are we going to do? cried Miss Cream. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And she began to sob. <laughs> at that moment, Mr. Cream heard a quiet little knock at the front door. He opened it and there stood an old woman who was just as plump and street sweet as a strawberry. Excuse me, she said brightly, but I think I can help. She went into Camilla's room and looked around. My goodness, she said with a shake of her head. What we have here is a bad case of stripes. One of the worst I've ever seen. She pulled a container of small green beans from her bag. Here, she said, these might do the trick. Are those magic beans? asked Mrs. Cream. Oh, my, no, replied the kind old woman. There's no such thing. These are just plain old lima beans. I bet you'd like some, wouldn't you? She asked Camilla. Camilla wanted a big heaping plate full of lima beans more than just about anything, but she was still too afraid to admit it. Yuck, she said. No one likes lima beans, especially me. Oh, dear, the old woman said sadly. I guess I was wrong about you. She put the beans back in her bag and started towards the door. Camilla watched the old woman walk away. Those beans would taste so good, and being laughed at for eating them was nothing compared to what she'd been going through. She finally couldn't stand it. Wait, she cried. The truth is, I really love lima beans. Oh, I thought so, the old woman said with a smile. She took a handful of beans and popped them into Camilla's mouth. Mmm, said Camilla. Dun, dun, dun. Suddenly, the branches, feathers, and squiggly tails began to disappear. Then the whole room swirled around. When it stopped, there stood Camilla, and everything was back to normal. I'm cured, she shouted. Yes, said the old woman. I knew the real you was in there somewhere. She patted Camilla on the head, and then she went outside and vanished into the crowd. Afterward, Camilla wasn't quite the same. Some of the kids at school said she was weird, but she didn't care a bit. She ate all the lima beans she wanted, and she never had even a touch.
touch of stripes again. The end of the bag, a uh, bag case of stripes. I love that book because it actually can, you know, justify my like of lima beans. They're really good. So guys, I hope you had a really good time listening to my stories and I will be back very soon next Thursday with some more great stories for you guys to listen to. I think next time we might do some animals. What do you think? All right, well, I'll see you soon. Snuggle in, put on your PJs, and don't forget to brush your teeth. I'll see you soon. Bye.